beautiful Mother's Day morning. It is good to welcome you one and all to Zion Church. It has been a very big week in the life of our community of faith. A special word of thanks to all of the gentlemen who came out to serve at the, uh, the spring fling this week. Uh, what a good time we had. What a good time. Now, the gentlemen came to help out, but it was only because the women were in there first to make almost all the food and tell us how, not, how to not screw that up before it was all over. But we had a really good turnout. It was a lot of fun. The entertainment was good, and the fellowship was very warm. At the end of the meal, um, the uh, gentlemen uh, packed up leftovers, and I was able to drop those off to Pastor Diane and Pastor Matt, who had just brought James home from the hospital that day. And so... What a hospitable gift from the congregation to, to continue to accompany them in this time of family leave. And speaking of hospitality, yesterday we had a beautiful celebration for George Harn. And I, the whole bottom of the church was full and half the gallery up top. And as I was greeting people after the service, uh, and just in case you were wondering, George's uh, gravesite is up in the top corner of the cemetery. He wanted the best view of the Middletown Valley. Um, took almost a half an hour to get everyone up to that, to that good view. But, you know, the kitchen crew was on hand, and everyone again and again talked about the hospitality of Zion and how everyone was so friendly and welcoming and doing for the family and doing for each other. It, was, it really made me proud to be serving with you in that time. It also didn't hurt that I was on my way right to Delaware for a service yesterday afternoon, and the women packed me a box. And I was caught in traffic on 95, and I think I had the best packed lunch <laughs> of anyone on 95. I mean, there were chicken and sandwiches, and then in the dessert, because they packed me a little dessert too, there was, and I don't know which one of you made these. I don't want to embarrass you, but they were Ritz crackers with peanut butter on them and then dipped in chocolate. And I know, it sounds great, doesn't it? But what was really special is when I was growing up, my grandmother used to make those. And she would invite me to come over because she only lived two blocks away. She'd say, why don't you stop by for some Ritzy Titsies? <laughs> and so when I put that in my mouth, it all came flooding back. And what a special memory it conjured up. The announcements of the day are in the announcement folder, and just a few to call to your attention. Next Sunday, the Congregation Council has called off the Congregational meeting. You're supposed to, at the early service, they all went, oh, oh, I know you're very sad, not another Congregational meeting. There'll be more information in the next newsletters, but that has been postponed for a while. So next week, worship and Christian education as usual. This week is the Joy Senior Lunch on Wednesday, and we need to know by tomorrow if you're coming. So please make a reservation, $10. It's a fried chicken dinner. Good fellowship, good food all together. Next weekend is the Middletown Community Day of Service. There's an opportunity to sign on for that. Please be attentive to that. Next weekend is also our Noisy Offering Sunday for Hartley House. So... Next weekend, we'll be shaking our buckets for Jesus, so please bring your coins, your cash, and your checks to help support that good ministry. I know that you are planners ahead, so two weeks from now, Memorial Day weekend, there will be one Sunday service at 10 o'clock. So if you come at 11 o'clock, you know what you'll be? Out of luck. <laughs> so 10 o'clock on the 28th, there's one service because it's Confirmation Sunday, and so Pastor Matt will return to help us confirm the five young people who will give their Christian faith, their profession of faith. So please mark your calendar for that as well. I think that that was all of the announcements. I, I get told which ones to say, and if I don't say them right, I get hit. I mean, encouraged to do better the next week. So. In our prayers today, we continue to hold up the Harn family as... We give thanks for George's life. Last night, uh, Mary Smith, who was John Burrier's good companion, she also passed into eternal life last night. And so this is a very tough week for that family, and it's been a tough season for that family. So I invite your prayers for 
all of those who loved Mary and accompanied her on her earthly journey. But as for now, we are reminded that the scripture tells us that this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us center ourselves to worship with the prelude. Please rise as you are able. We gather this day as we live each of our days in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we might perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, and by his authority, I declare to you this good news, the entire forgiveness of all our sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us lift up our hearts and our voices. Our hymn is number 824. grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated, and let us attend to the hearing of God's Word in Holy Scripture. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <coughs> Our first reading is from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. And then Paul stood in front of the aeroplast and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For when I went through the, the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands. As though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath to all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of you, your own poets, have said. For we too are his offsprings. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone or an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of humans' ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent 
because he has a fixed day on which he will have the world judged in the righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of he who is, has given up assurance to all by raising him from, from the dead. The word of the Lord. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 66, which we'll read responsibly. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. For you, O God, have tested us, and you have tried us just as silver is tried. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. Those I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. According to St. John in the 14th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor do they know him. You know him because he abides in you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a, little world, in a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, you in me, and I in you. Those who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Lord. Christ. You may be seated. Beloved, all grace, mercy, and peace be yours and mine from God and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you know, but some of you don't. My wife, whose name is Arwen, we have four children. And they are now 14, 20, soon to be 22, and 24. Two of our children are biracial. One is African American. One is as white as paper. We have two boys and two girls, two at home, one at college, and another who chased a girl to Iowa two years ago, only to be dumped two weeks later, and is still there. <laughs> it is wild, and it is complicated. There is a lot of love in our home and in our family, but there are also tremendous therapy bills for everyone. And days like today, Mother's Day, Mother's Day can make things a little complicated. Let me tell you why. You see, our younger son, Andrew, was fostered into the biological home of our elder children, Felice and David. And he came into their home when he was 18 months old. Then, 
When he was five, David was six, and Solis was eight, their mother died in a car accident. And that car accident, they were in the car, and their dad had fallen asleep while driving home from Pennsylvania, or to Maryland from Pennsylvania at Christmas. Solis, our oldest daughter, and her father were hospitalized for four months while David and Andrew were shuttled between relatives, and they all got home right after Easter. That August, just eight months after their accident, their father, he died of a broken heart. And his mother, that is, their grandmom, are you following me? She was a member of the church where my wife was the pastor, and she conducted the funeral. And their grandma, their father's mother, told my wife that there was no one in the family who was willing to take all three kids as a unit. And at age 78, she was thinking she was too old, but she was willing to do it if no one else would. Now, to make a wildly long story short, you still with me? The week after our first child, our youngest daughter turned one year old. Before my wife and I had just been married three years, we adopted Solis, David, and Andrew and brought them home to Julianne. And ever since, my goodness, Mother's Day, Father's Day, they have been complicated with grief, trouble, but also much love and the unexpected joy that such a day conjures for many of us. Mother's Day is complicated. I know that's not how it is in your house. It's all rainbows and kittens and unicorns in your families, isn't it? You will take your Mother's Day flowers and you will skip right out to the parking lot. None of you know anything of grief or complicated relationships, do you? None of you is missing someone who's gone to be with Jesus, are you? Some of you are separated by distance from your children, but by golly, Skype and FaceTime will make it all right, yes? Some of you are remembering children who've gone before us. Some of us are pasting on a smile and doing our Jesus thing today, trusting that God who has brought us thus far is not going to abandon us, at least not today. But into this wild and complicated situation and relationship that all of us know something of, into this, our gospel today, Jesus speaks a helpful and hopeful word. He reminds us that the true tie that binds us together is the love of God that is made known in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The love of God that has been poured out into our hearts and revealed to us. And parents, Spouse, children, family, friends, and beloved community. How does Jesus say? In our gospel today, Jesus says, if we are bound to Christ, if we love him and have him, then we will keep his commandments. If we are bound to Christ, then Christ seeks whatever it is that we need and intercedes for us at the throne of the Father. And Jesus leaves us a gift. Even as he's trying to prepare the disciples, even as he's trying to prepare the world for his ascension, for his death and his resurrection, Jesus says, I will give you the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth. And to sum that up, Jesus says it like this. To know love, the real love of God, is to receive it. And to know God, 
is to receive God in the gift of the Spirit that will be poured out for this world that God so loves in each of you. That's how we're connected to God. That by the power of the Spirit, you and I continue to be the disciples of Jesus Christ in a new day and age. And we embody the love of God in our words and in our deeds, keeping Christ's commandments by, by striving to love our neighbor even as we love ourselves. And we know that that is happening because the Spirit, the Spirit of truth, lives within us. And that truth comes out in what we do and how we serve. And the generosity of our time, our talents, and our treasure. I know you're thinking, that sounds real good. That sounds really good, Pastor. That's, that's how it is. If that's the truth, why is this room not packed to the gills? Well, the truth is that what you and I do, week after week in the eyes of the world, is quaint at best and ridiculous at worst. Others might reject or deny the faith that we share because it doesn't fit into their own understanding or their plans or their needs. But Jesus is encouraging us today, reminding us that the faith that we know is from the inside out. And that faith is true because he has promised and given us the spirit to lead us and to guide us. The spirit that empowered us all to be here on this day. And that Jesus himself will come as we gather around his word, as we are nourished by this community, as we are fed by his own body and blood at the table. The spirit wells up in us, is renewed in us, and we are born again to the mission and the ministry that we share to make Christ known, to make Christ known, to make God's love known in our words and in our deeds. The sad truth is, we live in a world that believes less and less. We live with and among beloved family and friends and neighbors who believe that God does not care. And the spirit of truth is our power to speak into those situations and to bear witness that that destructive myth is just that. It is wrong. Grace cannot be real, nor can it be amazing when we convince ourselves or others that God does not care. None of us, the scripture tells, were created to go it on our own. Literally, Jesus said it like that. I will not leave you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. No one is meant to be alone in the family of God. No one is meant to be without hope or help or community. And to gird up that hope, Jesus binds us to this promise that we will see him again face to face in God's good time. That we will know by our experience the way that the Father and the Son are bound to one another because we are part. We are part of that love being poured out. In and for the sake of this world. That's what Jesus is reminding us. We are bound to one another because we are bound to God by love. And the power of that spirit that is being given to us, that is born anew in each of us, 
is a sign and guarantee that because Jesus lives, we live. That because Jesus lives, we will live forever. Eugene Peterson, who wrote a beautiful translation of the scripture called The Message, actually translates the Greek word for spirit, not as spirit, but as friend. That Jesus leaves us a friend that lives in us and through us. The Reformed theologian Dale Bruner modifies that slightly, translating that spirit that Jesus promises as our true friend, whom does not fail. See, I am coming to you. And I will give you the spirit, the spirit of truth, an advocate, a friend, a true friend, who will live in you and through you and guide you for all of your days until that day when we are face to face and I will come to you again. Needless to say, it's complicated. Just like Mother's Day. It's complicated with all of its memories and realities in its joys, its sorrows, and its feels. But still, with Christ, we give thanks, holding fast to what is good, trusting that what is hard, trusting those hard things to the friendship and love of God given to us in that spirit of truth. For you see, Jesus promise not to leave us orphaned is not just about welcoming us into the Father's presence in heaven. It is about reminding us that we belong to God and to one another through that holy and life-giving spirit here and now and forever. How do we know? For it has been promised in Jesus' name. Amen. The hymn is number 449. With glad hearts, let us lift up our hearts and our voices. Please rise as you are able.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us be gathered now in prayer. Please pray with me. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promise to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our right. prayer. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly, show mercy to all who are oppressed, and speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Nurturing Lord, you sent your spirit to gratis peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone, and all who are sick or grieving, especially James, Jim, Darla, Jurgen, Mary, Nancy, Bob, and Melissa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers, children estranged from their mothers, anyone grieving the death of a mother, and mothers who have lost a child. Support all whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for the Apostle Matthias and all your saints, especially George Harn. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And also with you. Turn to your neighbor and share with them a sign of Christ's peace. Then with glad and generous hearts, return to God the first fruits of our lives and our labors. Let us bring our gifts and our tithes in the morning offering.
Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for all these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have won for us in Jesus Christ, who in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat all of you. This bread is my body which is given up for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and into our hearts, that we would receive the Lord with the living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in this your church, forever and ever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, so boldly we pray. Our Father, who art. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, now, let us keep the feast. You may be seated. I know for many of you who have been with me these weeks that I've been here at Zion, this is your favorite part of the service. How will communion go this week? I think we almost got it perfected at the 9 o'clock service. The server will come down, receive the bread, the body of Christ, in your open hand. Choose an empty glass for wine to be poured from the cup or a pre-filled glass of juice for those who have that concern. 
There are gluten-free hosts with the server. You may just say gluten-free, and they will offer you the opportunity to take the gluten-free host. Return the spent glasses to the baskets at either end of the aisle, and may God have mercy on us all. <laughs> Let us prepare for this great feast as we sing together the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God.
You may keep your seats for a moment. I'll let Bobby slip past. Friends, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us together in grace from now until life everlasting. Amen. Before we pray and we scatter, um, we're like this close to getting communion right. I can just feel it in my bones. So come back next week. And I, I feel like I, I've got it this time. I've got it this time. I, uh, one of these days, it's going to work just right. It's going to work just right. But thank you for your forbearance. Uh, as we go out from worship today, you will see the assortment of carnations. Uh, this is uh, the end of the day. You need to leave me one so I can take one to my mom, uh, who I'll see this afternoon, and maybe a couple for the shut-ins that I'll see this week. But please take a carnation. Um, Man, woman, doesn't make a difference, and give it to someone as a gift of God's love uh, to remember someone special on this Mother's Day. Please rise as you are able. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word in this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of an eternal covenant, work in you and me that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, to the honor and glory of the Father. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Our ascending hymn is number 408. Let us lift up our hearts and our voices together in song. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. As we go out into the world, let us remember our mission. As a people of God, we share Christ's love, grow in faith, and serve others. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.